Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And today I have a friend with me. Hey Van, come to the frame. Hey. Hi hey. everyone. <laughs> hey Van, what are we doing today? We're gonna have a shoot. It's an indoor studio portrait shoot. All right. And I will be using a budget gear. I'm gonna show you how to get professional results on budget. Let's do this. Today I am shooting with this Olympus Pan EPL7. It is a dinosaur camera now. The camera was launched more than 10 years ago. This is an entry-level mirrorless micro four thirds camera. And I have two lenses with me. The one on the camera is the Panasonic Lumix 12-32. Kit lens, it's a pancake lens, and of course, uh, something longer here. This is a budget telephoto zoom, the Olympus M Zuko 40 to 150 f4 to 5.6. We'll see what kind of shots we can get from these two budget lenses on a budget camera. And today, I want to prove that you can get fantastic results without spending too much money on gear. Say hi to the vlog, Ivani! Hi everyone! My name is Ivani. Currently, I'm uh, doing a free, uh, full time freelance model. Awesome, and Ivani has a YouTube channel as well. Of the link below, please subscribe. Yeah. All right, let's continue with the shoot. For doing studio portraits using the Olympus system, I'm sharing a few tips that may be helpful for you. Number one is to turn on the live view boost. Currently, the live view boost is turned off. As you can see, this is a live view simulation. What you see is what you get. If you're setting your aperture to f10 and shutter speed to 1 over 200, obviously, you're going to get a very dark image, right? So you can't see anything as you compose. If you want to have a clear, bright view to free frame your subject in a studio environment when you use high aperture and fast shutter speed, then go to menu. Under menu, go to the gear icon here, then go to D, D for display, then go inside the D and you find live view boost. And in this live view boost, you just turn it on. Of course, on different Olympus cameras, you will have different locations for live view boost, but it is a live view boost once you turn on, now you can see everything clearly. That will definitely help in your composition. The second tip that I can share is to use low ISO numbers. You can stay at the base ISO. For Olympus Micro Four Thirds products, most of the cameras, the base native ISO is ISO 200. This will give you the best possible results in terms of sharpness, dynamic range, and of course, contrast. Say hi to the vlog, Jojo. Hi guys, my name is Jojo and I'm here with uh, Robin for the shoot. Yeah, thank you so much, Jojo, for organizing everything. You are so amazing. Uh, my pleasure. And what are you shooting with today? So now I have here the EOS Canon R5 with the 70 to 200 uh, millimeter f4. Lens. Yeah, hold the camera nearer to the my camera. Yep, awesome. All right, so Jojo has a huge professional looking camera. Of course, he's gonna get some awesome, awesome shots. Jojo also has a YouTube channel, so please subscribe to Jojo. And we are going to continue to get more shots, yes.
Tip number three, shoot in raw. That will give you more flexibility when it comes to post-processing, when it comes to correction of skin tone, and generally, uh, it will definitely give you an edge when you want to edit your photographs later. Go to the Super Control Panel by pressing the OK button, then go all the way down here. That's when you can change the, between the JPEG and raw setting. I will shoot raw always for best possible results. My next tip, which is tip number four, it's not exactly a tip. It's more like a reminder that kit lenses are awesome. Do not underestimate what a kit lens can do. Even this humble Panasonic Pancake 12-32, it can do wonders. I will also switch to longer lens like this Olympus 40-150. This is a budget telephoto zoom lens. Sometimes shooting portraits, you need longer focal length. This will enable you to get more flattering results, more proportionate look, especially the limbs don't look too long or too fat. Everything just looks natural and pleasing. In between this budget Telephoto 42150R and this Panasonic 232, you can get awesome results. Do not underestimate what kit lenses can do. Say hi to the vlog, Georgie. Uh, hello guys, I am Georgie, makeup artist, and it's been uh, always a pleasure to meet with different people and to create this artwork more uh, incredible. And being in this industry is quite really uh, close to my heart. I love art and it is really kind of uh, a masterpiece that you can create. But it takes a mass, it takes a village to create a masterpiece. So we have one beautiful model here, Ibani, and we will, we will make this ma masterpiece truly uh, unforgettable and outstanding. Thank you so much for How can we find you, Georgie? Uh, at my Instagram, I am Georgie Makeup Artist. See you there. All right, Bye. thank you so much. Looking at the photographs I've taken from this shoot, you can really see that the results look really impressive. Zooming into to the details, the shots look really sharp, there's plenty of fine details. Yes, this is a budget lens, this is a 40 to 150 r you can find it for like 200-300 ringgit in the used market, but the results is still really, really good. And this camera is more than 10 years old. You, it doesn't really matter. I'm still very happy with the results that this camera and this lens can give me. I'm here to prove to you that budget gear like this EPL7 and 40 to 150R can still produce some professional looking results. The important point I want to make is stop giving yourself excuses. Use whatever camera you have. You don't need the latest and greatest to get some good shots. All you have to do is just use your camera and start making photographs happen. Go out and shoot. That's all I have to share for this particular portrait shoot with the budget gear. And hopefully you can see that you don't need expensive gear to produce excellent results. If you found my sharing beneficial, if you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way. It will definitely help me to make more content and publish them right here. Until the next one, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Guys, if you remember, I had the, the EM1 Mark III before and I've given it away to a friend. And the friend is here. It's Ben. Show your EM1 Mark III. Yes. So, yes. Oh. How is my EM1 Mark III come to Papa? Anyway, <laughs> it is Van's camera now. So after you've used the EM1 Mark III for how long now? Oh no, I can't, I can't remember. 
maybe I think a, a year? year, a year, a year, at least a year. Yeah. So how do you find a camera? Let me just turn the camera to you. How do I find the camera? How do you find uh, the Yamaha 3? First thing, it's way, I mean, it's much reliable than my EM1 Mark 1. All right. And I love the grip, the grip. The grip of the camera feels good? Yeah, feels good. Yeah. And the game changer. It's the SD card. Dual cut slots. Dual, yeah. yeah. Cannot go back from <laughs> that. <laughs> That's great. So enjoying the camera so far? Enjoying. I use it for uh, taking photos and vlogs. Vlogs before, as well. Before, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, guys, check out Van's YouTube channel. Links in the description below. Subscribe. <laughs>